Welcome back sports rehab experts. Today we're going to be talking about the best exercises you can do for your hips, knees, and ankles using a slant board. Showing right down below. That's a steel version. We're going to go head into the home gym. I'm going to show you a nice uh, alternative solution if you don't have a big fancy gym with some of these heavy duty slant boards such as this one below. There's an easy foam slant board solution for you that's very cheap that you can find on Amazon. So we're going to head to the home gym and I'm going to show you those exercises on that slant board. But before we head there, I want you to be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that alert button so you get notified every week when we put out these helpful videos just for you. All right, so we're here at the home gym. This is the foam wedge or slant board that I was referring to. If you Google or Amazon a foam slant board or a foam wedge, this will pop up. It's firm, it's durable, it's very useful for a home gym. So we'll get into the exercise. We're going to start at the foot, work our way up to the knee and the hip. All right, so for the first exercise, we're going to put the slant board on an angle. We're going to put our big toe forefoot up on the uh, slant board. And what this is going to allow us to do is this is going to allow us to rock forward and train the arch of our foot to flatten and recoil. Flatten and recoil or eccentrically load and then propel out of it. Eccentrically load and then propel out of it. So this is a nice one to create adaptability into your foot. Key points, maintain the foot in a splayed position, pressure over top of the entire forefoot, keeping the heel down as you rock forward, that arch should flatten and drop down like a trampoline. And as you rock back, straighten the knee, that arch should rise up. And you're just going to go back and forth with that motion there. Next up is the foot and calf complex. We're going to use the slant board to go up on two feet and do a calf raise. Use something to hold on to balance. We're not trying to work balance with this exercise. We're just working calf Achilles strength and plantar fascia strength. So two hands on the wall. You can use a weight loaded heavier. You can also progress to a single leg heel raise. The nice thing about using a slant board is it takes the foot and the amount of stretch that the Achilles goes through or experiences in a lot of different sporting activities or running and sprinting. So this position is a nice position to get really, really strong in coming out of that bottom position of the calf raise and working all the way up onto the toe where you get a little bit of great toe extension or big toe mobility with the exercise as well. Exercise number three is for the knee and the hip. This is the knee over toe single leg tap down, um, or I, I like to refer to them as the matrix tap downs because it looks like your neo from the matrix leaning backwards. So this is a great one to train the quad eccentrically and work on resiliency of the knee being able to go over top of the foot. So keys with this exercise is the heel stays down. You're going to lean your shoulders back and do the limbo. Or if you've seen the movie The Matrix, like Neo, leaning backwards, dodging the bullets. And you're just going to reach the opposite foot out, tap the floor, and come back. Depending on if this is a new exercise for you or you've been doing this exercise for a while, rep ranges could vary anywhere from 5 to 30 reps for multiple sets. Again, nice exercise to train the patellar tendon, develop knee resiliency of the knee going over top of the foot as it does so in just about every sporting task and simple things such as just going down the stairs. Also works the quad eccentrically and develops that hip extension where you should feel a little bit of your glute kicking on as well too. So a nice one to train and open up the front side of your hip with that as well. Next up is a heels elevated split squat. So we're back in that heels elevated position. What we're gonna do is use a kettlebell, reach forward with the elbows, and we're just gonna drop down and come back up. Now as you do this, there's a slight rotation towards the stance leg. I'm not over rotating, I'm just subtly rotating so that the kettlebell is over top of the foot. This is gonna eccentrically load your glute on that front side leg. Nice exercise for again, the knee as well as the hip. And we don't even have to utilize a weight with it too. For beginners, we can just use 
opposite arm kind of reaching forward to rotate you over top of that foot to eccentrically load this glute. Dropping down, coming back up. Final exercise is a rear foot elevated, just like the previous two, hip hinge in a staggered stance. So for this one, kettlebell is gonna be in the opposite arm. You're gonna shift your butt back, kettlebell will weight right over top of the foot, and then you'll stand back up tall. Now this one, again, is gonna work that hip hinging pattern to eccentrically load the glute, but in a little bit deeper of a hip flexion range of motion. This exercise is nice for any type of individual who gets a lot of pinching sensation in some of those deeper hip flexion movements. Elevating the heel oftentimes will take that stress in the front side of the hip, turn it to more of a muscular working out sensation in your glute and remove any of that provoking pain pinching that you might get in the front of the hip if you have limited hip mobility. So it's a nice one to gain some hip internal rotation.